Today, I'm going to take you step by step of how we dealt with the inventory on our house after our house fire. Um, we did have part of our house still standing and part of our house, the garage mainly, was completely demolished. So we had to kind of work in the best of both worlds of dealing with our inventory. So I'm going to share with you some tips of what we did to create an inventory and to make sure that it was accurate as well. I have created a Facebook group that I will link to in the description and also I will pin it in the comments below. And if you have suffered from a house fire or from a tornado or flooding, whatever, any kind of insurance claim for your house, we'd love to have you join over there and ask questions of people just like you that have dealt with an insurance claim and I am active there too. So if that's you, join us over there. It is free and private so that you can ask any question and get it answered and not everybody will see it on Facebook. Um, so our agent for our insurance company came in and did the inventory of our house. So she was in and out in maybe an hour. So not her house, not familiar with the layout of her house, came in, did inventory, left. So can you imagine? She missed some things. There were some things that it it would truly intrigue me by like we had a kiddie pool outside that was melted and she walked out oh that's a kiddie pool yes we had kids so it seemed kind of obvious but at the same time there were some things that surprised me that she knew and then some things that she missed like in our kitchen we had like a kind of a peninsula that went out and there was a drawer on the back side that was just kind of in an odd place nothing from in that drawer got on our inventory so there were things that she missed so when we got the list back from our insurance agent that she did the inventory on, we went through and tried to figure out anything that she missed. And ask your insurance company how to handle this. They will give you some direction. And I would encourage you, there are two things in your insurance claim that if I could say this 500 times, I would say it 500 times, take pictures and get everything in writing. So I would ask your insurance agent how they'd want you to handle it and get it in writing. Have them send you an email. Um, I got different information at times and if you have it in writing, you can fight it a little bit better. You can fight it because you have proof. And if you have pictures, you can prove that you owned the items. So for the part of your house that is still standing, if that is the case, Take pictures, take them inside the house, and take pictures of every single item. Yes, it might sound tedious, but it will save you in the long run, I promise. So, get in writing how they would want you to handle the inventory. So, I'm going to share with you some things that we did. This is what we did. Not every insurance company is going to be the same, but hopefully this will give you some things to talk to your insurance company about and see how you can handle these things and maybe... They will be okay with what we did or they can change it a little bit. But for missing items, we created an Excel document and we listed like in that drawer in the kitchen, there might've been placemats in there. So we listed like placemat. And then we found a comparable placemat on Bed Bath & Beyond, copied the link for that placemat and put the value of that placemat and quantity. So say we had four placemats, we put placemats, four of them, four dollars and here's the link at bed bath and beyond and we went through and we did that for every item that was missing from the inventory i would not attach pictures but if you have them then they can always be like well we never saw this and then you can pull them out and be like well here they are so i want to take the time to attach them because at this point i don't think they're necessary unless they ask for them and then that's what you need to do so that's how we handled things that they missed from the inventory. The things that were in our garage, the things that were completely demolished. She couldn't come in and take inventory of those. That was all on us. Thankfully, it was the garage. So guess who got that job in our household? My husband. Although I did have things in the garage that I had to help him with because obviously I stored stuff out there as well. But how we kind of handled the garage. One tip we were given was look at a registry or go to a store like you're creating a registry. So the garage, go to like AutoZone, walk around, or go to like TSC or Lowe's and walk around and see their tools. 
just to help you jog your memory of what might have been out there that I forget that I owned or that I used once that I probably should have just gotten rid of, but it was there. And so you need it on your inventory because what you own is what you should get credit for. Don't be thinking, oh, well, I never use this, so I'm not going to put it on my inventory. Put it on your inventory. That's why insurance is here. You're not taking advantage of them. You paid for them. That's why they're there. Um, so go through. If you need to go to that store, if it's your kitchen, go to Bed Bath & Beyond. If it's your bathroom or say your bedroom, go to like TJ Maxx or Kohl's or something and look around and see what you might be missing. Um, also kind of take yourself around the room. So like start on this corner and work your way around and think like what shelves were there, what was on this shelf and like kind of work yourself through the room and then go back and fill in details. And we did the same thing as the missing items in the house. So we just added them on what the item was, how many we had, the price was and the link that we found that price for. And they pretty much went through and gave us that price because we provided them the link. We basically did the work for them. Um, they might not want you to do that. Ask them and see what they want you to do. Okay, so I'm looking what else I have down here. Undervalued items. So we took our inventory and this can be pretty tedious, but it gained us a lot of money. I mean, thousands of dollars. So if you think about like the time that you put into it versus what you're able to receive from it, um, I, I truly think it's worth your time. You can take the list that they give you and just run and say, I'm done. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. But once again, you owned these things. You worked hard for these things. You pay for insurance for a reason. So there were some things that were undervalued greatly on our insurance. One of them that I can think of was my husband had a Carhartt coat. It was like a winter Carhartt coat not just uh, the shell, but it had like the warm inside. They gave us like $50 worth and it was valued at like 100, 120. So we went in and commented line item 577 was a Carhartt coat. And this is the link for it. And this is what we think it is valued at. And honestly, they went back through and they changed almost all of those items to what we said that they were worth. None of them were huge value items, but every $50, every $10 here and there add up. And I know some people ask like, how about like my clothes? Do I need to go through and itemize all of those together? This is probably going to depend on your insurance company, but we don't have super high end clothes. And so honestly, what they gave us for most of our clothes was appropriate or even more than I would ever go back and spend. Um, but yes, you are going to have to replace them. And so you're going to have to go and buy. So like t-shirts, we owned way too many t-shirts. Um, but there were like some line items of $40 for an $11 or 40 t-shirts, it's not dollars, 40 t-shirts for $11. And honestly, we had free t-shirts from Menards. We had t-shirts my husband got free from work. Um, of course, to replace those, it costs money. And maybe there was a t-shirt in there that we spent $20 at one point. But realistically, for the most part, those would balance out and we were given way more than we probably ever spent. So obviously try to weigh those out. If it's listed like that, you're probably not going to fight for the $20 t-shirt because you know that it kind of averages out. But if they itemize them out like each, then go ahead and fight for one of your t-shirts to be more expensive. Um, so go through. Take your time, sit down for a half an hour, look at every item, see what it's worth and look it up and provide them with that link. So that helped us to get several thousand more dollars from our insurance company and helped us to be able to replace the things that we wanted to and to be able to give as well with the things that we didn't want that we could buy and give to other people. So I would love if you would like this video and subscribe if you have made it this far. I'm hopefully going to walk through some other things that we did with our insurance to hopefully help you with your claim. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or join that Facebook group and ask them in there. And if I can, I will help you along this journey because I know it is daunting, especially the inventory aspect of it, but you can do it. 
just one step at a time. Keep working through it. And I will see you in the next video.